Today we need to talk about a few stories that are floating out there. One, we get to talk about the future of Super Smash Bros. Because guess what? Sakurai has decided to go on record talking about the future of the franchise, his plans, his what he thinks is going to be a challenge and all of that. And that's always really exciting. We also get to talk about some updated information on how well... Mario Wonder is selling because it just jumped ahead of Spider-Man 2 in a key territory. So we got to go over that. And then more than that, we actually have something that's, I mean, it's Switch 2 related, at least, that we need to talk about. Mostly because uh, I, I don't like how it's being presented and we need to add some clarifications. Now, that being said, before I dive in, I just want to remind you, we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers. So go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and... Uh, Take a hammer and s s smash that bell icon to be notified of all future uploads, including our live stream, because we will be live tonight at 8 p.m. Central. <laughs> all right, we need to talk about Super Smash Bros. and the future of the franchise. Now, look, I do think that we're going to get a Smash Ultimate Deluxe or something like that early in the Nintendo Switch 2 life cycle, but it's very obvious the franchise is super popular and we're going to get more of it. Eventually, they'll have to make a new game. While well, Sakurai runs his own YouTube channel, he's been doing it as a passion project for some time now to really good success, mostly talking about Smash, but also talking about some other avenues of game development. And in his most recent video, he put in there a little something to do with the, well, next Smash game. Here's what Sakurai said. As for what comes next for the Smash Bros. series, even I'm not sure. I feel like we truly succeeded in making people happy with this game. But now that Smash Bros. has grown to be a monstrous size, I'd say it's difficult to imagine an increase of this magnitude happening again. Every time we managed to make a game I had previously thought impossible. So I can't say for certain that there won't be another, but I do think it will be difficult to push it any further than we have. Now, obviously, you know, he's felt this way in the past. You know, he felt this way with the Wii U and 3DS Smash game and like, how the heck do we even go further than this? And then they found a way, but now that they brought all of the characters back together, plus new ones, and all the different modes, I do think it is hard to just keep going in that direction because eventually, one, you can end up with a roster that's completely untenable. If you end up with like 200, 300, 400 fighters, it, that's just going to be an impossible to manage task for pretty much anyone, including Sakurai. So it's hard to just keep going in the direction they've been going in. And obviously, you know, they have all the different modes and like Smash Bros sort of is what it is. I think the smartest way, and Sakurai's briefly touched on this before, that he would do another Smash game, and he's totally open to it and willing to, but that he needs to get, you know, Nintendo to maybe understand that it would be something different. And I do think that that's probably the best way forward would be a reboot of the series. Now, how they reboot it, smaller roster, uh, what are the key differences? That's obviously something I will completely leave up to Sakurai. We all have ideas on what they could do. Maybe there's more of an emphasis on story. Story. Maybe it's a different style of fighter. Maybe they turn it into an arena style fighter. I don't know if that will work, of course. I'm just throwing out ideas. I don't actually know. I'm not a game developer. I don't have to figure this out. But it's one of those that, well, he, he thinks it's, he basically thinks it's almost impossible to keep going in the direction Smash Bros. has been going. So I do think early in the Switch 2 life cycle, we're going to get that 4K up res port of Smash Bros. But beyond, you know, including all the DLC together. But I, I just think Whatever's next, it's still going to be a while. It might even skip a generation. I've talked about this before, how you know how Mario Kart basically skipped this generation. I know we had Home Circuit, but essentially Mario Kart skipped this generation and we're just using the Wii U Mario Kart. I think that that might happen with Smash next time around. Now, maybe they go ahead and launch another fighter pass and add another 5 to 10, maybe 15 characters uh, just for the hell of it so there's new content to sell to people, but... Honestly, I, I do think the future of Smash lies in rebooting the franchise, but it's going to be up to Nintendo and Sakurai. Nintendo tells him he can't do that and he's got to find a way to top what he's already done. Well, um, Sakurai said he's felt this way before and been able to do it, so maybe he still can. Maybe he can go ahead and pull that rabbit out of the proverbial hat. I don't know. But I do think rebooting the franchise and finding a fresh direction for it might be the best way to handle it. But it's going to be controversial, of course, because... 
If you completely change up the way the fighting game works, that could be a problem. And then if you don't change it enough, then people will wonder, well, is this just a lesser of what we've already had? <sighs> I don't envy the situation they put themselves in with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I do think we're going to get another Smash game. It's just too popular not to invest in it. Next up, we need to talk about, well, the UK sales charts. Normally, we don't talk about it unless something notable happens. And last week, which was the launch week for Spider-Man 2, Sonic Superstars, and Super Mario Wonder, we saw that Super Mario Wonder was actually just behind Spider-Man 2, but obviously for Nintendo games, we don't have digital sales. Well, the second full week, and it's really first full week on the market, Mario Wonder actually jumped ahead of Spider-Man 2 in the latest charts and is now number one with Spider-Man 2 being number two. Now, this is completely unusual and doesn't typically happen, but there's a specific reason for it this time around, and that is because while games always sell less in the second week than the initial launch, the drop-off is usually pretty samey in percentage-wise anyways when it comes to the, the loss of sales, right? It's right around 70% or so of you know loss from week one to week two. Well, Mario Wonder bucked that trend and only dipped off by 55%. So it sold 55% less physical copies in week two than it did during launch. That's actually really good. You want to know why? Because Spider-Man 2 dipped off at 69%. Nice. Yeah, I, it, it, it's interesting because that's a typical fall off and that's not bad news for Sony. It just shows that, you know what, just looking at launch sales is never a barometer for full success. Nintendo does tend to create evergreen titles and Mario games are fairly evergreen. They're not as evergreen as their spinoffs, like a Mario Kart or a Mario Party, you can see that in the fact that Odyssey hasn't had sales updates every single quarter because, again, it's not selling a million units every quarter, but it is something that does typically sell very well for at least six months, usually at least you know two to three years before the sales finally drop off. Uh, you know, it doesn't stay as evergreen as Breath of the Wild's been able to do. That's about first for Zelda to ever be that evergreen, or obviously as evergreen as Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Animal Crossing, and all the rest. But just throwing out there that this is actually really cool to see Mario Wonder actually climb the charts. I fully suspect when we get our update on Thursday from Famitsu that it's still at number one, unless there's another big game launching in Japan I'm not aware of this week that could bump it down. But I think Mario Wonder will probably maintain its number one position maybe for the rest of, you know, I don't know, November. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, we don't know. Uh, there's, there's other games coming out that can steal some thunder, like Super Mario RPG. Also, WarioWare. I don't know if that's going to take off in Japan, but maybe that's the exact audience for WarioWare. Anyways, I'm just really happy to see Mario Wonder doing well. I'm sure you are. And uh, for those of you that got to that final uh, badge level, folks, uh, Nintendo created their most difficult... Mario level of all time. It exists in Mario. I don't want to hear about how easy Mario Wonder is. The most difficult level Nintendo's ever made is in this game. And I'm not kidding. And if you've gotten there, you know. Now our last story is dealing with something I find to be interesting to talk and speculate about, but I don't like how it's being presented. And unfortunately, it's all too common especially in the YouTube sphere. And I'm not calling out anyone specifically, but we do have these reports out there about a Nintendo Switch 2 patent. Now, I have covered patents in the past and I have speculated on what it could mean, like hall sensing sticks for Nintendo Switch 2. But in the end, when patents for Nintendo, and as someone who's covered them for 30 years almost, almost 30 years covering Nintendo and their patents, I am well aware that if a patent comes out for something that hasn't already been announced, that means this is a canned idea by Nintendo. There are a billion patents put out by Nintendo, and they're either about a product that's already out or already released, or they're just canceled. And this happens to be one of those situations where Nintendo clearly had an idea for something. They maybe even had a prototype at some point, but it's not coming out, and that's why this patent is public. We're talking about the fact that there's a patent out there showing a dual screen Nintendo system that got some people excited, especially since the dual screen was optional and even detachable. And one thing you can, I guess, if you wanna fringe speculate is just because this particular device will not exist 
doesn't mean the entire idea of an optional accessory attachable screen couldn't be released. I'll give you an idea of how this could work. We've seen with Nintendo Switch Online that Nintendo will release custom controllers, the NES controller, the SNES controller, N64, for the given platform. It could be theoretically possible that if Nintendo added DS or 3DS games to Nintendo Switch Online on Switch 2, that they would then sell an accessory that would make them, well, basically an attachable screen. What well, would basically be the whole, there would be uh, an optional attachable screen, and then that could enable the, and like, the most realistic form of playing the game. But again, I don't. I just don't think Nintendo's going to do it, even for that. Yes, they would have to make it playable without the attachment as well, even if it's in a more limited capacity. But that's neither here nor there. The point I make it is, this is a patent that's out there. It is factually filed by Nintendo. It does exist, and they likely prototyped it at some point. This is not something that Nintendo is actually going to be selling. We've seen this so many times when these patents come out. It would be different if Nintendo Switch 2 was announced and then this patent came out, because then you could say, oh, this might be something that they just haven't told us about yet. We saw this with Tears of the Kingdom when there was a Tears of the Kingdom patent that came out towards the end of 2021 for the game that was already announced, but had ideas and stuff in it, like shooting your arrows midair and stuff that hadn't been shown off by Nintendo yet, but it was clearly a patent for a game already announced versus this be a patent for a device Nintendo hasn't even acknowledged beyond saying we're always making new hardware and we're transitioning to what well they haven't told us yet we'll just have to wait but yeah guys this patent's being presented as big Nintendo Switch 2 news and we'll go into more speculation and hype and ideas you know for this on our live stream tonight if you actually want to have a discussion about it and I think it's fine to discuss it I just don't think it's fine to present it as Boom, here's this big, big Switch 2 news, because it's not really about Switch 2. It is a scrapped idea. Might have been for an alternate model Nintendo Switch, for all we know. I've seen people speculate that this could have been a like DS version of the Switch. I, beats the hell out of me, guys. Heck, maybe this was actually just a prototype for a possible classic console. Remember how we talked about the NES Classic, the SNES Classic? We speculated on an N64 and Game Boy. What if this was more like a DS Classic? Again, there's a lot of things this could have been, but what it isn't is a product Nintendo's actually going to release. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am the Thunder RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video. Wait a second. Dang it! Nate! Ugh. Remember, this is a Prime News episode. <coughs> 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 And that was Prime News. Yes! First time, baby! <sighs>